Formula One cars can reach up to speeds of around 360 km per hour on straights, and it also maintains a high speed around the corners due to the heavy downforce generated by the cars. Then, an error of centimeters is enough to lose the total control of the car, making huge crashes that cause damages worth several million dollars. Most of the times, Formula One crashes are scary, and most of these accidents bring near-death experiences to the drivers. The Formula One governing body, FIA, is now upgrading the cars with different features to provide full safety to the drivers. The heavy crash of Mick Schumacher in the streets of Monte Carlo raises the attention towards the safety concerns of the modern F1 cars. Two-time world champion Fernando Alonso pointed out that more attention should be given to minimize the impact of crashes by the FIA to improve the safety concerns of modern Formula One cars. He expressed this idea after the severe crash of Haas driver Mick Schumacher that resulted to split his VF22 into two separate parts. The accident we saw was very serious, Alonso said. It was almost like Jetta again, where Mick's car was also split into two halves. The gearbox was separated from the chassis, as it was again in Monaco. Luckily, he was alright, but I hope Formula One and the FIA will draw the right conclusions. When the accident happened, Schumacher was chasing down the Alpha Tori driver, Yuki Tsunoda, and he reckoned he was just 10 centimeters offline. But that little error was enough to cause him to lose control of the car. Then, young German driver Schumacher skated sideways into the barrier at the swimming pool sections of the Monaco track, which splits the chassis of the car, separating the rear end and the gearbox of the car. The impact was severe and frightening one where the car bounced off from one barrier before hitting on another. But luckily, the driver was well protected inside his safety cell without any serious injuries. Fernando Alonso made his first mark in Formula One way back in 2001, when he was signed as a full-time driver of Minardi F1 team. Then he moved in between different teams, like Renault, McLaren, and Ferrari, which used different engines and technologies. He has driven with V10 engines, V8 engines, and V6 turbo-hybrid engines also. Now he has spent nearly around 20 seasons in different cockpits of different teams with different technologies. He knows how the evolution of modern F1 cars has taken place over years. He is now spending time with Alpine with the aim of clinching the third driver's title for his name. With the retirement of Iceman, Kimi Raikkonen, at the end of last season, he became the most experienced driver in the current Formula One championship. Outside of Formula One, the Spaniard has driven in other racing categories like World Endurance Championship, IndyCar Series, IMSA WeatherTech Championship, and Dakar Rally as well. So, he knows how the technology has been deployed in different racing categories to improve the safety concerns of the cars. According to his experience, he pointed out that the heavy weight of the car is the major reason for such heavy impacts. Alonso further stated that this crash is never a result of the speed of the car or due to a flaw in the design of the car. Alonso said, It seems to me that the car didn't split into two because something was wrong with it. The problem isn't the cars themselves, but their weight, the two-time world championship Alonso added. They are very heavy, currently more than 800 kilograms, so the inertia when they hit the wall is much higher than before. Perhaps this experience will teach us something. When Fernando Alonso first drove for a Formula One team, the weight of the car was in the range of 600 kilograms. But with the introduction of different technologies and rules to Formula One, the weight of a Formula One car increases slowly up to 800 kilograms. According to physics, with the increase of the mass, it directly increases the kinetic energy stored in the car and energy released during an impact is heavy. So, the impact caused from a car weighing 800 kilograms is surely heavier than the impact caused by a car weighing 600 kilograms. Alonso's statement is most probably correct according to physics. That's why modern racing cars tend to break easier than older F1 cars. We saw how the Romain Grosjean car was split into pieces after a scary crash with the barriers during the 2020 Bahrain Grand Prix. That was a near-death crash. He was trapped inside the barrier and the debris, but luckily, Grosjean was able to get out of his car. So, it is necessary to take immediate action by FIA to control the impact of these types of crashes, as the driver's protective shell is directly exposed to the outside during an accident, making the driver vulnerable to serious injuries. 
1996 Formula One world champion Damon Hill has expressed his view regarding the cause for the less impact on the driver, Mick Schumacher, even after such a scary crash. The former world champion says that's because, between the different impact areas on the various sides of the car and the chassis braking, it minimized the strain on the driver's body. To be honest, if you whack a Formula One car in the right place, you can see it swinging around and the back of the car takes a blow laterally rather than longitudinally, and so they're quite weak in that direction, and sometimes they're designed to break apart. But yes, it looks pretty alarming, isn't it? And actually, it's quite an amusing moment where the marshals picked up the back of the car and just wheeled it off like a wheelbarrow. But you know, in actual fact, it looks worse than it is. I mean, a rotational accident is actually quite a good thing because it dissipates the energy and the driver, the shock if you like, goes into the braking of the back of the car off and rather than into the cockpit where the driver sits. Outside of the safety concerns of the car, the most important thing is the recovery cost. Mick Schumacher broke his car for the second time in this season, which will cost around $1 million. The last time he split his car in Saudi Arabia and both the crashes appear to have the same type of damage. Haas team principal Gunter Steiner is very angry about this crash as it affects adversely on the development budget of the car. I think the cost is pretty high because all the suspension is gone except the front left said Steiner. I think there is still something on there, the rest is just carbon powder. I don't know money wise, but between gearbox, the whole bodywork is done, radiators are gone, 500,000 to a million dollars I would say, he added further. Mick Schumacher arrives on the grid with a lot of hopes after being crowned as the 2019 Formula 2 champion. On the other hand, he won a lot of attention from the media due to his famous surname which dominates the Formula 1 for decades. At the end of the 2020 season, Haas decided to replace their former driver lineup with two rookie drivers, Mick Schumacher and Nikita Mazepin. Mazepin was most famously labeled as a pay driver and Mick Schumacher always outperformed his teammate in each round of the 2021 season. For the 2022 season, Haas built up a car that can fight for top 10 finishes and Mazepin's replacement, Kevin Magnussen, has already shown what Haas can achieve with their VF22. But Schumacher is still unable to match his performance with teammate Magnussen. On the other hand, he continuously crashes, making heavy financial impacts on the team budget. If he cannot improve as soon as possible, Mick will be unable to continue the legacy that his father built.